faith, intention, that gut feeling that can drive you through your greatest obstacles. From a challenging childhood to a mission-driven adulthood, Leslie Williams and her faith gave her the strength to defy the odds. She now spends her time serving through healing practices like Theta Healing and Reiki and life coaching. Please stay tuned as we discuss these concepts and hope you enjoy the talk. The Essenes, the Inca, the Mayas, all of them, they had something in common. If they wanted to heal, they feel it. They practice by feeling. And when you feel a high elevated emotion, you create heart and mind coherence. If I can be an instrument for people to understand that we have all the technology inside of us, that we can do it um, as we tune to this biggest force. Uh, everything can happen. All kinds of healings can happen. I think when I came to this planet, right when I arrived, in this planet, my journey with the healing started because I am a twin <laughs> okay. and my sister uh, was born perfect and I was born with a lot of physical issues. The first two weeks of my life, uh, I almost died. And that is the first step of, I believe, the healing because my father basically saved my life. He decided to change, move me from the hospital that I was in to another hospital and that's how he saved my life and and I, I as a, a very a born a newborn I was extremely uh, fragile and that led to another um, uh, consequences later on and so I had heart what issues. was the what was the one um, hospital doing that the other hospital wasn't doing uh, was basically, so, yeah Basically, they were, um, I was being uh, fed by the ivy and, and what they were putting it, the medication that they were giving me, because I have a severe infection um, after a week and a half, no results. So my father decided, okay, this is not working. You know, I, and then he had what we have because we are spiritual and we are energetic beings. So we have that feeling that gut, that intuition that we all had. I have to change my daughter. He knew it. Love he it. knew it. So he, he had the feeling. He connect with the feeling. He connect with the intention, his intention. And then he basically saved my life because moving me to another hospital and putting me in a new uh, therapy, let's, put it, let's say this um, right. way, it's what saved my life. Um, but as a, as a result, I have a lot of physical issues. So I, I remember because I was, I had heart issues and I had my, my hands were literally like this and I had crooked legs. My legs were literally crooked. So imagine I had a perfect copy of myself and I was a child that all, I have this memory. All I wanted is to run, to climb a tree and and I, honestly, I don't remember um, any feelings of uh, of uh, feeling sad. I, I remember this feeling of wanting so bad and to heal. And even if my parents did everything, they were extremely loving and caring, and they did everything they could. Um, it 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 was on me, right? right. It was on me. And, and that was the first, in my understanding, the first deep experience that I had with fate. And fate is believing in something, trusting and have the confidence in something that we don't see or someone or God or something, right? But it's inside of us. We have it. We are gifted with, with this incredible power of fate and so as a child that would was would move in me step by step for the first six years of my life and you know just climbing a tree and 
and the intention to run, to be free, that feeling. And, and then from, from there, and um, of course, I also suffer as a child, um, the consequences of all the physical uh, issues that I had. I was bullied in the school. And so that led to also a lot of other issues, mental and, and, and uh, emotional issues. Um, and then uh, throughout my life, I was always in connection and in the search for uh, answers and, and healing and how could I improve myself. And um, in Brazil, because I'm Brazilian, spirituality is something that is very, uh, it's big, you know, people enjoy and they believe in spirituality. And um, so I, I dive in to uh, find more about my real self. You mentioned something about mediumship. Um, is that right? Yes. And yes. So our... Are, are, are you or was one of your, your, your uh, parents uh, a medium or is that just something that's very common in, well, in Brazil and maybe, we, maybe less we common all, here? We all are mediums. <laughs> we all have this ability to connect yes. and with, with the field, with everything. We just don't know. And it's, it's interesting how um, this ability became... It's like a glamour and it's not, it's an ability that everyone has. Uh, I had a old sister that passed when she was 20 years old. And then we decided to open a center with her name dedicated to her. And basically it's a spiritual center that receives people um, and, and allow them to connect with themselves and kind of, there's all kinds of different um, uh, works uh, they do um, uh, healing work like kind of like Reiki but using the connection with the spirits and uh, talking with spirits and and that's a, a path that people in Brazil follow to find healing right and so, so that of, was kind of like a, a church but more of just kind of a place to gather to yes, a quiet yes it's more it's more they don't call it church. They call more uh, like a doctrine, a path that you follow, a philosophy. And then because we all have uh, one thing that I always like to to emphasize with my clients and with all the interactions that, that I have is my belief that we should give the credit not to ourselves because we came in this beautiful planet by the hands of something that is greater than us. In this path uh, in Brazil, it's, it's this what we do. We connect through the ability that we receive, we all have. And I, I really don't like to call it channeling because it's just the ability. If you practice, you might well be able to connect, right? And to get in, in uh, the answers and receive all this beautiful love. And, and then that's basically how it started. I, I was uh, working, serving people um, that were coming to our center and um, all the, the work usually in the centers in Brazil is done voluntarily and no charge. It's everything. Wow. Yeah, it's everything. The base of this work is giving. And, you know, and, and people go to these places to find healing different kinds of situations. So that's beautiful. It really is. Yes, it is. So, it is so beautiful. these days, I mean, you, you sound great. You look fantastic. I, I feel like you have come out, come um, overcome so many of your obstacles as you were, um, you know, that you had when you were younger. Um, yeah. Like, how did you come to, to make that happen? I mean, what are you doing these days that keeps you in such good health and uh, what kind of things do you practice that um, you might want to talk about a little bit to? Uh, yes. Uh, well, I, I, I think that the biggest shift uh, in my life, I consider, even if I believe it in all this, is, even if I was in search of all this my whole life and growing, I was in my mind. 
and um, and this is something that happens in this civilization because this civilization right now that we are living um, for a while it was a civil it is a civil civilization that was based on matter and the beliefs uh, the Newtonian beliefs that we were and we are only matter right? right yes so if we believe that we are married we are completely disconnected with ourselves because then we believe we are our body so that's for a long time in my life even if i was searching and digging and and trying to i was in my mind and i was disconnected from the heart and if we think about asian men and all these beautiful cultures and everything that they they left for us and the Essenes, the Inca, the Mayas, all of them, they had something in common. If they wanted to heal, they feel it. And, and prayer or meditation or, or tuning or whatever you want to call or communion, they practice by feeling. And when you feel a high elevated emotion, you create heart and mind coherence. And if, if they want to Native Americans, for example, if they wanted to rain in the desert, they will stop, close their eyes and feel the rain and imagine the rain and smelling the earth, all that. Because, uh, because they knew it. They knew it that we are energy beings. We are not matter. We are energy. It's nice that science is now able to, um, you know, back up. There's so many studies out there that, that support this idea of like a collective consciousness or thoughts or things, or um, you ever seen the movie, um, uh, What the Bleep Do We Know? Yes. Um, <laughs> you know, that that was one of my first movies way back when. Yeah. And I was just like, whatever, <laughs> you know, that Here's was, a yeah. And then yeah. The Secret, you know, that's kind of, uh, kind of yeah. popular, but there's a lot of science that backs a whole lot of this and so even the people that are really in their head are like well there's some valid validity here <laughs> I yes, with that word. but yeah. um and so it, it is starting to open up even the most analytical minds to um something that just didn't make sense years before exactly yeah and and to what we were talking about before the connection in between heart and mind it's a path to healing because it leads to Faith. It leads for you to believe in something that you cannot see. Um, the Heart and Math Institute uh, in California, close to San Francisco, mm -hmm. they did two wonderful studies, these amazing researchers. They were able to prove two things. One thing is that um, thought, emotions, they are connected, totally connected. So we, when we have a thought and we we have an emotion. So if I have a belief or a dense thought, it will lead me to have a dense emotion. And as we are energy, we are vibrating beings. So we vibrate all that density, not only outside, but also inside, mainly to our inner world. So um, that was for me the shift. Because when once I was able to get off my mind and connect with my heart and I found the devotion and then i thought okay this is what i want to do i want to serve people my purpose in life is to give and and be an instrument if i can be an instrument for people to understand that we have all the technology inside of us that we can do it um, as we tune to this biggest force that I call God, you can call source or anything your audience believe. Uh, everything can happen. All kinds of healings can happen. And now, as you said, now we are getting back to the, the, this incredible knowledge that, that brings healing if we tune and and if we believe and if, if we allow ourselves to connect. So you asked me before what I do today. Basically, um, I, am, I am a Fida healer and I'm also um, um, 
uh, uh, mindfulness meditation instructor and a Reiki practitioner, but my in my daily life, every morning, right when I wake up, I give myself the time to connect with myself and, and get in this communion. Nice. And just, yeah, and just be open to uh, understand what else do I need to work on today? What, what do I need to discover, right? right. That, that it needs to be healed still. So theta yeah. healing um, is about uh, connecting and and um, giving permission to make change. The name comes from the theta state. Okay. So when we are in theta, our brain waves are operating in between four to eight cycles per second. So very slow. Ah, okay. When we are young and when in our childhood, so that's I, I, I'm gonna come back to the childhood to explain to you more. From zero to seven years of age, we are navigating in theta. That means that anything that is said to a child from zero to seven years of age, it will be downloaded because the child doesn't have the analytic mind already developed, you know, and they, they cannot have It'll the discernment. It. Yes, so it's just download, 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 download. In my case, even if my parents were loving, amazing parents, I had a belief that I didn't feel supported right. because I, I was born with my legs crooked, right? right? I had that belief. So what happens is that if we are, as we said, we are trillions of, of cells in our body. We are made of energy. We are pure energy. And now we are acknowledging that. So Feta healing, basically what it does, it's that through a guided meditation takes the client to this Feta state, which is also the same state that we are when we are dreaming. Okay. So any command that it's given to the subconscious mind, why we are navigating in Feta, it will be done. So the magical of Feta healing, it comes from the fact that it, this is the first step. And so imagine you have, I had a network of cells with this belief. I don't feel supported, right? And right. in my unconscious, it's totally, we don't realize. So throughout my life, all my life, I repeated in my unconsciousness that I didn't feel supported. After so many years of repeating that, sending that, and having that unconscious belief because the limiting beliefs are totally unconsciousness. We, we don't realize we have them. Right. What happened to me is that I end up having extremely sciatica pain in both legs. You had to change your way of thinking in order to actually heal and make progress. Yes, but because, because we have that in our subconscious mind because we throughout our, our life we accumulate thousands and thousands of limiting beliefs without knowing the only way for us to understand that we have these limiting beliefs is in a theta state because the same way that when we were child and we were downloading once i get to theta all the cells that have that those networks are open to receive energy right. again, to receive information and information, it's energy. So when you're young, so, you get, you're in theta and you get programmed in theta. When you exactly. get older, when you get older, those doors generally shut until you open yourself up to it. And when you do that, you can then reprogram some of those theta exactly. programmings. Yes, it's reprogrammed by basically the subconscious mind and what we do is that we guide the client to a theta state and for the energy of the creator, the source, it's not me, it's you, it's the client connecting. So again, we come back to the faith and the communion and the modality and the technology that was given to us. Right. So once you connect with your true self and receive the pure and conditional love from the source, from the field, then it works because what we do is that we guide 
the client. And once the client is there, we, we give commands. Okay, now um, let's remove and cancel the belief that I didn't feel supported and then and replace from a new belief that I feel supported, that I know how it is to walk in my life feeling supported and every day, all day. So for the first time, we are receiving that boost of loving energy, right. right? And then we create new, we have new connections, new information, and the result is, is that you will heal. <laughs> so that's the magic of Theta healing. And it is done. I am an instrument and I allow you as a client or the clients, they allow this to happen. And as I always say to all my clients, either clients from um, mindfulness meditation or Theta healing, that it's the intention, your intention to do this. It's already half of the way, right? Because putting yourself out that I want to do this, you connect with the intention. Intention is a force of the universe. When we intend something, right? We feel connected, we feel aligned, we feel that we are onto something and we have the stomach flip and, and we are able to create marvelous things like the pyramids and so many incredible things by connecting to intention. So that's why I decided once I heal myself to, to serve and, and live my life serving others and through Theta Healing, because I, I think Theta Healing is a great modality because it comprehends a lot. It's, it's also an, another thing is that you allow the client to connect with the fate again, because so many people that are going through trouble times mm -hmm. and uh, challenges either in their health and the mental or emotion, they are hopeless, right? They lost the connection and failure healing brings this back to, to, the, to, to the person that it's open himself or herself to this. Are you familiar with uh, Bruce Lipton? Oh, I love Dr. Bruce. <laughs> he, he's fantastic. And, you know, that was one of the first books I read was one of his called uh, Biology of Belief. The Biology of the Belief, yeah. <laughs> um, I, I think really because I wanted to understand how this works and he's a biology, you know, he's a microbiote. He was talking about cells on a uh, cellular level, right? And, and how it <laughs> works. And, um, and it was very interesting because to me, like the first part of his book was talking about all the science and how cells interact and it was rather dry. Mm -hmm. And then halfway through the book, he went to a chiropractor and, <laughs> and he had an experience. He did, he did muscle testing. Um, yes. And this uh, chiropractor was actually able to, was able to tap into his subconscious and it absolutely yes. blew him away. And, you know, he writes about this in his book. And yeah. then, so the second half of his book is all about how the, there's a, a consciousness and there's a, um, an energetic connection and how all of this ties to the first part of his book. So it's this very yeah. interesting cyclical, you know, it starts off pure science and then he has an aha moment. And then he starts talking about um, energy and being congruent and, thought and mind yeah. and intention and then he ties that right back around to the first part of his book but he's yeah. another example of what we were just talking about that you know it used to be that everybody was very spiritual and everybody believed and was connected so forth and so on then we started getting into science and numbers and uh you know research and, and all of that and which is fine and it just it kind of took us away from that it took us into our heads Exactly. But a lot of that science, a lot of those numbers, a lot of that research is now proving all of this it spirituality is. and energetics. And um, it is now being supported by science. Yes. And I love that. One of, yeah, me too. Um, I'm very grateful for Dr. Bruce because um, I think he's, he was able to bring all this amazing information um, in a way that people would 
believe yes <laughs> with all his wonderful research and he also in in his website he's generous enough to recommend theta healing and a lot of different modalities of energy healing and uh, muscle testing is one thing that we use in theta healing we actually yes. we do it before and after the session so we test because the what happens is that if you make a statement that that conflicts with the belief that you have storing your subconscious mind the muscles are going to go weak because there's this this harmony right, right. of information so that's how before um, when before we start and take the client to a beta state, we test to see, okay, so I have, I confirm that I had the belief that I didn't feel supported. And once we are done, we test again to confirm that the belief was removed. And then we know that that it, it was removed and then we don't need to work in some other belief. But it's super interesting that you brought the, the fact that we have the collective belief of not tapping into our emotions. It was, it's not generations and generations uh, before us, they used to believe it. they could not talk about their, their emotion. It was something that was ugly and not allowed. And you, you know, women could not express their will. And so those, that's what we call in Theta Healing, collective beliefs lead to some issues that we have to, today yes. and now dr bruce thanks god gave us all this information to break this belief now now you're a uh, writer is that correct yes and, and you're I, working on putting together a uh, a podcast of uh, uh spiritual yes. stories and um, yes the podcast it's um it's going to um be focused on healings that people had that are completely against the odds. When people make this shift, this change, this healing, how is there some sort of common thread that you would say has helped to facilitate many of these people in these stories? Yeah, and, and those stories, that, that's, that's one thing that I always ask in the podcast because the similarity in between the stories is fate. They have the, their breakthrough, and the breakthrough was fate, was connecting to, and it, even if they, and not fate in the sense of religion, because in my understanding, fate transcends religion. Right. Fate is, yes. it's what we have. It's we, who, what we can be. When we have faith in something, we are able to do whatever we desire right. and that's the very beautiful and, and and the thing that i want to explore because it's common in all stories everybody had that <laughs> well leslie this is this has been wonderful is there um anything else that you want to you know touch on before before we uh, wrap things up do you think uh, I just want to thank you for this opportunity. As I said before, I think what you're doing is amazing. Thank you so much for allowing us to share this beautiful world of uh, not only energy healing, but all kinds of different therapies that people can find for healing. <laughs>